Hi, Chris here. Thanks for stopping by my channel, All Time Jack. Today I'm going to install this Delta 15840 mortising attachment to my Delta 15665 drill press. My uncle gave me most of the pieces about a year ago, but he couldn't find this box here that has the rest of the parts that, it, that I needed. A couple weeks ago he found it and gave it to me and now I'm ready to set it up and put it on my vintage Delta drill press. So there's a full set of bits here, and then the rest of the parts I needed to get this thing together. It's the half-inch bit that I'm interested in right now. I was initially going to use that on another project, and I ended up having to do that one a different way because we couldn't find this box. And that was the turning handle that I made, and it turned out really cool. I'll put a link down in the description if you'd like to go and check that out. Let's check out the attachments now. Here are the pieces he initially gave me about a year ago. There are some duplicate pieces here, so we'll only be using some of these parts. The table on this drill press is solid, with no holes in it, and the mounting bolts have to come up through the bottom. So we're going to have to fabricate a quick panel to sit on top of the table. The instructions recommend doing this with half inch plywood, but I'm going to use MDF, melamine, and T-Tracks. It will only take me a few minutes, and I already have the stuff to do it, and it'll also make it a little easier to use, I think. The MDF was just about the perfect size, so I just cut this metal meme to fit it. I think that's gonna work out just about right. And so now I need to see what kind of T-Tracks I have left in here. I was hoping to get away with just using that one, but uh, it's not going to be enough. And as you'll see in just a second, my bolts don't go in there anyway, so I'm going to have to use the blue ones. Those are going to work really good, though. And they'll look kind of cool as well. So now I'm just going to drill some holes, put some counter bores in there, and then screw these together. You want to be careful not to put any screws where your T-Track slots are going to be. I haven't marked them out yet, but I have a general idea where they're going to be, so I'll just steer clear of that area. Alright, these are looking pretty good. So now we can get these T-Track slots marked up. Pay close attention here because you can't get them dead center on your rod holder or you won't be able to get your clamps to go through. So you gotta put them on the inside or the outside. I think I lined them up on the inside. I'll explain a little more about that here in a minute. Right now I'll finish marking these up and get them ready for the router. And here I'm gonna hook up my handy dandy dust collector. And then here, you're gonna be able to clearly see that I forgot to turn it on. But I'll get my T-Track grooves cut out. Maybe I'll remember to turn it on next time. So I'm going to lay them in now. Check them out. Make sure everything's looking good. You're not sticking up too high or anything. Everything seems to be looking good. So we move on to the next step which is making sure we got this in exactly the right place. Uh, if you mess this up, if you get them centered, you won't be able to get your hold downs, your J hooks through. I know it still may be a little confusing as to what I'm talking about, but when we get it on the drill press, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about a little easier. So let's cut these T-tracks, get them secured into the new table. And now I'll just pre-drill some holes and uh, get some screws in them. And you want to be careful right here because you don't want to over torque them screws or use the wrong drill bit or anything because you really need them to hold down pretty good. Okay, let's slide some bolts in. Drop the rod holder on. Look at it. Fiddle around with it. Move it around a little bit. Take it off. And let's build a fence. It is very important that this fence is absolutely square. 
So we're going to join it. That side's obviously going to take a couple of times, but then we'll run the other two sides to the planer and get it as square as we can. I'm just going to get some through holes on here and I'll come back and route them out in a little bit. But for now, I just need to kind of get it together and see where I need to cut out the fence. And here we go. We'll just kind of partially assemble it, put some marks on it, and sand away. That looks pretty good right there, I think. So I'm just putting some stops on the edges here. I'll be able to go side to side. It'll stop where I need it to. And then I can flip it around without adjusting anything and do the same thing on the other side. Hey, remember to turn the dust collector on. Now let's get this thing installed. We we'll start by taking this clamp off. It's not that difficult. You can probably get this down where it takes you five, 10 minutes from beginning to end after you've done it a time or two. Now pull the coil down a little bit, lock it down, and there's a set screw in there that sits in a groove. You wanna make sure and loosen that set screw off before you pull this off. Like I said earlier, this is not that difficult, but there are a few things you gotta pay attention to, like the set screws. And now we'll slide that chisel holder on. That set screw I was talking about just a second ago, you can see the groove there. This chisel holder will have the same set screw and that's where it will lock in. You wanna make sure it's perfectly lined up where that set screw goes in the groove. Very loosely snug it up. And we'll put the depth gauge on. Get it to line up with that. and then put the nut on. Tighten it up. Put a backup wrench on the top. Tighten it again. Now we can let that quill come up and tighten that set screw down. Put the bolt and the nut through, tighten the clamp up. Now we can drop our new table on. And I'm just gonna clamp it on for now. I'll probably just use it as a clamp on table. There's other things I can use it for as well. I have a video also on the restoration of this drill press. You wouldn't believe what it looked like when I found it, what kind of shape it was in. I tore it completely down, completely restored it. Every last nut, bolt, everything. I'll put a link in the description below if you'd like to go and check that out. Now we'll get these bolts slid on there. Then we can put the fence and the rod holder on. Please like and subscribe if you like this sort of thing. I've got several other videos, some of them involving this drill press. As I mentioned, the restoration of it, but I've also made a custom nameplate for it out of aluminum on my CNC machine. And I've got a video on that too. I'll put links down below. And now we can drop this hold down arm on. So this is what I was talking about earlier. These J-hooks go through the rod holder right through the center. If your bolts that are coming up from the bottom from the T-track slots, if they're right in the center, then the J-hooks won't be able to go through and you wouldn't be able to slide them in to hold your workpiece into the fence. So you have to get your T-tracks in just the right spot inside or outside of the slot for your J-hooks. So this is the first bit and chisel we're going to use. It's a half inch and the perfect size for what I need it for. So this drill press is over half a century old. I don't know how old this mortising attachment is or the bits, but this one looks brand new and it's still really sharp and it's the size I need. So we're going to give it a go. So I'm going to read you the instructions to this part. Insert the bit 
through the chisel and into the key chuck. Clamp the chisel at such height that the upper face of its shoulder remains about 1 32nd of an inch below the holder and tighten one of the set screws lightly. Push the bit up through the chisel as far as it will go and fasten and chuck securely. Release the set screw and push the chisel upward to take up the 1 32nd of an inch of space previously left. Then tighten both set screws. This method assures having the proper clearance between the cutting lips of the bit and the points of the chisel. Now I will say that I did that exactly and it worked pretty good, but I was able to just make some very fine adjustments and play around with it a little bit and got it to work a little bit better. Now it's time to get these J hooks in here, tighten down, and uh, get to drilling a square hole. Now if you do this properly, you can get those J hooks just right where it won't let your work move forward. And then you can bring your hold down arm down and get it tightened down where it won't come up. But you can still move your work side to side to get your mortise as long or wide as you want. And here we go. Now this thing is cutting very good. The deck on this thing is very solid though. If yours is not this beefy or that solid, you may want to build a brace going from the bottom of the table down to the floor. That way you would have some additional support for the downward force. Well, let's pull it out and have a look. That looks pretty good. Let's see how it fits with this half by half flat bar that I want to make these tool handles out of. Well, it certainly felt like a good fit. Let's see how it sounds. All right, perfect. And since we're just messing around with scrap wood here, let's go ahead and cut a larger mortise and see how it looks. So I'm going to double the size of the chisel and cut a one inch mortise. I'm really curious how smooth and even this thing will cut, how good a mortise we can get. And here we go again. It's really cutting pretty easy. You do got to put a little bit of force down on it, but probably not as much as it looks like. But let's pull it off and have a look. And I got to admit, I'm fairly impressed. I wasn't expecting anything spectacular or anything, but there's nothing wrong with this at all. It looks good. Might as well throw a dado stack on the table saw and cut a tenon. This is an 8 inch. They make smaller ones and a larger one. You want to make sure your saw is capable of taking a dado stack, but you also want to make sure you got enough motor for it. That chart right there is telling me how many blades and shims to use to get the desired thickness. Now we'll install them on there, and you want to make sure you got all your teeth going in the right direction and in the right position. And that looks good right there. Get the nut on, tighten it up, plug it in, kick it off for just a second. Looks good, sounds good. Let's cut a hole in the throat plate. And I'll just move the fence over top of it. And then hold the other side down with a push block. Bring it up until it's all the way through. All right, I think that'll do. Let's get a blade height set for the tenon. All right, that looks pretty good. 
And I'm not gonna get my miter gauge or my sled out or anything. I'm just gonna kind of freehand the tenon here. Well, let's see how it turned out. And it's a perfect fit. Probably would be a little on the tight side for something you're going to put glue in. So I'll play with this a little bit, figure out the tolerances I want for glue and expansion and contraction. And I really am pleased with how well this worked out. I wasn't expecting it to not work. I was just surprised at how well it did work, how precise and smooth everything was. I really enjoy bringing this old stuff back to life. I just love it and getting use out of it. A lot of this old stuff works better and lasts longer than the new stuff ever will. There's a shot of that custom nameplate I made for this drill press. Thanks for watching. See you next time.